Hello my friends. It is uh, February and as you can see uh, we are somewhere warm, not at home. My we are friend, here. My friend said it was 13 degrees at home today. Okay so it's 13 degrees here so you know what who knows the weather is so wacky lately who can say <laughs> but we are in Charleston South Carolina and as you know Chris and I are big uh, proponents advocates of traveling and I've done tons of videos of how we travel in uh, our van with the dogs and how we love to take them on road trips and how a well-behaved dog is so much easier to travel with and uh, I'd like to say that we're having a good time down here in Charleston but we're not unfortunately we are not this is the last road trip we'll be taking for quite a long time and if you travel around in a camper van or an RV or I guess even a car for that matter, you know that the risk of a breakdown on the road is always there. And uh, we've had a few breakdowns, but nothing as serious as the breakdown we've experienced now. I won't get too deep into it, but essentially uh, the drive shaft- The TV's guts are falling out. Yeah, the drive shaft came apart. Uh, our shocks are completely shot. Our wheel bearings are shot. Um, and I had the van checked out before we left and everything seemed fine. It didn't really start to act up until we got all the way down into Charleston area. And we've been trapped here for a week. So we're paying out the nose for a hotel because we have dogs. And also keep that in mind if you travel with your dogs. You can't just jump into any old hotel. Um, we're also paying an extra $50 US uh, uh, fee per day for the dogs to be in the hotel. And uh, yeah, our, our basically, this is costing us close to $10,000 for this week. That's the repair on the van. And we're being held sort of hostage. We're stranded, like there's nothing we can do. The van is not even drivable. So until the van gets fixed, we don't have a lot of choices. Oh, cyclist coming through. We're all gonna move over here to the side. Do, do, do. And uh, you know, this is, this is the reality you face. But at this point, we've decided that uh, Stevie is, he's too old. We got over 350,000 kilometers. It's a 2000, so it's a 24 year old van now. And we've just decided that we have no confidence left that Stevie can take long road trips. So he will still be my work vehicle um, because it's climate controlled and I've talked a lot about that and that's the whole reason that I drive a camper van, this big expensive camper van, is because he's, he's climate controlled. <laughs> and uh, that's how I keep the dog safe in the summer when I'm taking them to lessons or nice and warm in the winter, you know. But at this point, I won't be using the van other than for work. Uh, Chris and I have always planned on buying a newer van but uh, probably have to sell one of your kidneys nowadays to get an affordable one so we're not sure when that's gonna happen and we've just decided that uh, it's time it's time to retire after what five years almost I almost no, six I years yeah RIP Stevie <laughs> yeah we've just decided we're gonna retire road tripping for a while um, we can't afford another bill like we couldn't really afford this bill to be quite honest this is really this has really strained us and We've got this beautiful walking trail behind the hotel, but this is really all we've done. We have no vehicle, we can't go anywhere. And we're we not about to <laughs> afford, like, spend money on a car rental. What are we gonna do with dogs we, anyway? We, we can't actually take taxis looked. taxis with dogs. We actually looked, I looked into it because we're about 20 minutes outside of the French Quarter, which, which is, is the, where we wanted to be. Yeah, it's the tourist area of, of Charleston. And the, the taxi, there and back was over $300. They had to charge us a pet cleaning fee and all this stuff. Good God, when you're already paying this much for your repair bill and the hotel, I mean, as if we're gonna spend $300 on a cab to go sightseeing for a day. So we've essentially <laughs> been walking the dogs on the path every day and hanging around the hotel. They got a gym, so I've been working out and we've just been watching a lot of cable TV. <laughs> I just, I get to run. It is what it is. Um, but I thought the one thing I would show you in this video is I think one of the most overused commands, but in this case, one of the most important commands that we've ever taught the dogs and how, is, how it's helped us back at the hotel. I mean, all their obedience helps us. The fact that they will walk nicely at our side when we're coming in and out of the hotel, 
um, the fact that when we take them over to the area to go to the bathroom, they just go to the bathroom and then we're done with that. So, you know, all the training is going to help you with your dog on the road, but uh, let's go meet up back at the uh, hotel and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Welcome to our new home on the road. <laughs> we are staying at a at a Hilton. It's the only one in the area that uh, wasn't filthy and also allowed dogs. So it's a little bit uh, more than we wanted to spend, but what can I say? We've got a safe, quiet place and we've got a little kitchen over here to cook our food and some cable TV happening. And I said I would talk about the most important command. And I see the place command being recommended by trainers and people all the time as sort of a fix all for every single behavioral problem and it just doesn't work like that it's an obedience command but it does help a lot in situations like this so one of the things we do have we keep their little travel beds in the van and when we ended up coming to the hotel we brought their uh, their beds out and this way they've got a comfy spot and we can put them where we need to and then they can just hang out on their beds and relax here and they know what we need them to do and at least the bed gives them something familiar, like they're used to this, they know their bed, they know where they're supposed to go. And uh, little Penny over here has her bed. Hi, little Penny. How you doing, sweetheart? Oh, Penny went for a long run with Chris today, so Penny's nice and pooped out, which is, uh, you know, as they say, a tired dog is a good dog, and uh, yes, only for the time they're tired, but hey, it doesn't hurt when you're doing something like this. Ollie, my little friend, you feeling cozy? <laughs> I know. And chickpea. Hey, baby girl. Oh, you got your little bed to hang out on. And uh, yeah, all we've been trying to do is exercise the dogs because uh, we need to be fair to these guys too. This is a strange environment and I will say all three of the dogs were pretty stressed out on the first day. This is a new environment for them. And we live in a house, so they're not used to hearing sounds out in the hallway. So all these things are stuff you should think about if you're going to be traveling. And you know, you don't expect to end up in a hotel, but having dogs that are trained um, really helps. And having something for the dogs that is sort of like familiar to them, that they know like their beds really help them settle in. They know where they should be in the room. And they can relax and uh, what can we do? We're just gonna wait and hopefully, fingers crossed, we hear from, uh, mechanic in the next couple days and we can actually start heading home and I've got uh, basically two weeks until I reopen for business and start back to dog training so uh, yeah uh, let's hope I'm not moving my business to Charleston South Carolina anyway you want to add anything to that <laughs> no no it is what it is. Uh, traveling uh, with dogs can be tricky and traveling in an old van can be even trickier and it is what it is and here we are so looking forward to getting back to opening my business and even more so just getting back to canada i miss my home country and i just want to get this van back on the road all right we'll see you in a couple weeks back in canada <laughs>